Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are studying Surviving Life, a series based on Genesis 39, verse 21. In this session, we'll look at Genesis 37, verses 1 through 4, Overcoming Family. Our text tells us the difficult circumstances of Joseph's family. Let's read that text, beginning with verse 1 of Genesis 37. Now Jacob dwelled in the land where his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that his father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Joseph's father was known as a deceiver. Jacob deceptively traded to get his brother's birthright. Jacob married sisters Leah and Rachel and had mistresses called concubines. It seemed that Jacob was not very involved with his children. He fathered 12 boys and at least one daughter by four different wives, by four different women at the same time two wives and two servants. Joseph, a son of his favorite wife, Rachel, was Jacob's favorite son. Jacob was old when Joseph was born. Jacob gave Joseph a special coat. Some of the issues that family faced are apparent in, some of the issues that family face are apparent in this scriptural record, anger, Resentment, favoritism, competition, jealousy, violence, and parental not involvement. Any of these seem familiar? Despite those circumstances, God was with Joseph to help him overcome the challenges he faced. And God can help you overcome the challenges of your own experiences, your own circumstances. Family challenges are not new. The goal is to have healthy families by following the basic principles of Scripture. God's Word can give you victory in your family. Consider God's instruction to parents and children. First, look at God's Word to parents. Know Jesus as Savior, the first key to godly parenting. Let Jesus be the example of your life, the priority of your home. Romans chapter 10, verse 13, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't leave church at church. Early churches didn't have buildings. They met in homes. Philemon, two, to the beloved Aphia, Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your home, in your house. Romans 16, 5, likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Aquila and Priscilla, he's talking of. In 1 Corinthians 16, 19, the churches of Asia greet you. Aquila and Priscilla greet you heartily in the Lord with the church that is in their house. Colossians chapter 4, verse, 4, verse 15, greet the brethren who are in Laodicea and Nymphos and the church that is in his house. So love one another, get married, stay married. The secret to godly, successful marriages is found in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, verse 22, verse 25. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. So love one another, train your children. 
Make them a priority. Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train, the, the word train, the word that's translated train, literally means to constrict. And depart means to turn aside from. Much interpretation, gymnastics have been done with this verse over the years, usually by those wanting to justify the negative results of their parenting. However, the command and the promise are clear. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4, And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Proverbs, the Proverbs 31 mother is a great example of providing, working, caring, and commitment. Families who function in love produce new families who function in love. But the same is true for families who function in anger. Children are influenced by their parents for good or bad. So first, look at a word to the parents. And then second, look at God's word to children that they obey their parents and God. Galatians 6, 1 through 3. Children, honor your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, that it, which is the first commandment we promise, that it may go, be well with you and that you may live long in the land. Psalm 119, verse 11. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Many family problems result from a lack of obedience. That they learn to worship. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers day, night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call the remembrance to genuine faith that is in you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Children are never too young for parents to teach them how to worship God. Parents must begin by setting the example. They will be influenced by your example, good or bad. And that they flee excuse me, that they practice self-control. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. Flee also useful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. And that they take care of aged parents. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 4. But if any widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show piety at home and to repay their parents for this is good and acceptable before God. These actions don't seem to be popular. They're not evident in our society today. What would happen if they were implemented in our homes, in our churches, in our society? Let me ask you, are you the child that God would have you to be? Challenges in family life are not new. Parents and children are pulled away from obeying God as they always have. The result is the world in which we live. So how are you going to respond? Well, start where you are. The past is the past. Don't let the past rob you of a blessed present and a great future in God's will. You probably will need to make some changes in your life to get in line with God's word. Well, let me ask you, are you willing to begin to change right now? You answer that question and you have a great day. <laughs>